Welcome to the past HTC exam question video. So what I'll do in this video is cover this past these past HTC exam questions, which are all multiple choice questions from between 2001 to 2011. And what I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual questions. There's quite a few, quite about 19 questions that are all to do with the third context point of the search for better health module. So I'll read the question and you have about five seconds to pause the video. Once you pause the video, attempt the question and press play when you're ready and I'll go over the actual answers themselves. So the first couple of questions are why are antibiotics ineffective in treating malaria? Malaria is not caused by bacteria. Malaria is not an, an infectious disease. Malaria is not transmitted by mosquitoes. Malaria is associated with net wet environments. Now, next one is which of the following pathogens in order of increasing size? So list those in the following increasing size. Bacterium prion virus and protozoa macroparasite. Macroparasite prion protozoa bacterium virus. Prion virus bacterium protozoa macroparasite. Virus prion bacterium macroparasite or protozoan. Next one is Koch contribute to an understanding of disease by developing a method linked to, to a particular pathogen to the cause of disease. An experiment to disprove the theory of spontaneous generation. A method of killing microbes by heating and thus preventing decay. An immunization program that based on knowledge of the immune response. Next one is which scientists contribute to our understanding of the cause of infectious disease? A. Frank McFarland Burnett. B. Louis Pasteur. C. James Watson. D. Morris Wilkinson. You ready? Pause the video and attempt the questions. Welcome back. Alright, so the first one is A, the next one was C, then this one was A, and then this one was B. And malaria is not caused by bacteria, antibiotics only fight against bacteria, which are listed in the increasing size. Prion is a big proton, remember it's the smallest one. Virus is a proton, uh, a protein, but also has other parts to it. It's a bit bigger than purely a protein. A bacterium is going to be bigger, it's a cell, but it's prokaryotic. Plazoa is the next biggest, it's a eukaryotic, but these are both, these are more unicellular. This is about 10 micrometers, this is about 100 micrometers. Macroparasite can be quite big, even I can see it, so this is obviously the biggest. So this, these are the increasing size, and the rest are wrong. Then this one is a Koch, what he did is he had the idea that one pathogen caused one disease, that was his uh, Koch's postulate. He figured out a method to link specific pathogens, specific diseases, and the rest are all wrong. And who's which scientist um, did all of this? That was Louis Pasteur. I won't go into exactly what he did because there'd be another question on this as well. But Louis Pasteur was the correct answer. Uh, next, let's set the question. Next one is a patient was being treated for an infection using antibiotics. At seven day intervals, a swab was taken from the mouth and cultured into onto a fresh agar plate. This is the plate. What is most likely caused of the change in the mouth microflora shown in these culture plates? A. Species 1 was the food source of species 2, allowing more of the species 2 to grow. B. Species 1 and species 2 are both fungi, but species 1 is killed by the antibiotics, while species 2 uses the antibiotics as food. C. As the number of species 2 is increased, they change the chemical conditions of the agar plate by stopping the growth of species 1. Or D, there is a normal balance between numbers of each species, but the removal of species 1 by the antibiotics allowed them more, more of species 2 to grow. And next one is a model of virus shown in, uh, what is the approximate diameter of the virus? A, 13 centimeters, B, 13 nanometers, C, 13, 113 um, micrometers, or D, 0.13 micrometers. And ready, pause the video and attempt the questions. Welcome back. All right, so the correct answer here was D for number 15 and D for number 18. The reason why this one was right is because here we have everything being in balance. Right? We have more of species 1 than a species 2. But then something happens. Uh, there's a, a imbalance and species 2 takes over. The reason why is because more of species 1 has died. So it's less, there's more space, which means more of these can actually take that space. And they replicate, replicate and in the end, they take, they've taken over. Right? So that's the microflora imbalance. So D was correct. And next one is one, 0 0.13 micrometers, so which is the same as 130 nanometers. You also have, I mean, you've got the, you've got the, um, actually the legend here, and you've got the one micrometer is 1,000 nanometers. So even if you didn't remember how big one was, you could have used that to figure out the actual size. The size is 0 0.13 micrometers, whereas a bacteria would be about 10 micrometers. The 
next couple of questions are this, so I'll read through them. Which of the following pathogens types cause diseases that can be treated with antibiotics? A. Bacteria, B. Macroparasites, C. Prions, D. Viruses. Which observation can be used to demonstrate Koch's contribu contribution to the understanding of the cause of disease? A. Polio vaccinations trigger an immune response. B. Some mosquitoes carry a pathogen that is often failed to people. C. A lack of vitamin C is found in all people suffering from the nut nutritional deficiency scurvy. The bacteria Helicobacter pylori is present in the stomach of all people diagnosed with stomach ulcers. Next question is, which of the following observations help develop a model for the transmission of malaria? A. The immunization against the pathogen will prevent the transmission of malaria. B. The use of antibiotics decrease the incidence of malaria in the community. C. After transmission, B cells in the infected individual produced antibiotics against malaria. D. After swamps were drained, there were a major decline in numbers of individuals catching malaria. Next question is, what features of prions distinguish them from all other types of pathogens? A. Prions are not cells. B. Prions do not contain DNA. C. Prions do not contain nucleic acids. D. Prions cannot reproduce outside a cell. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the questions. Welcome back. All right, so in this case, A to A is the correct answer. A D, we've got 19 D, and we have 17 C. So obviously, antibiotics it's only is used to treat bacteria, not, not the rest. We've got the fact that the stomach ulcers, when every person that we have had the stomach ulcers, we've got the same Helicobacter pylori present is one sign that we can use, so that's how we can use Koch's postulates, that's part of Koch's postulates to make sure that every person who is actually infected by a certain disease has that certain type of pathogen. So that's what we can use to, to show the evidence of the cause of disease and these are all wrong. Then this one is before the swamps that were drained and those swamps that were drained were catching malaria. So. And this is just basically what we we removed the swamps and we realized we realized after the swamps were removed, the area had gone it's gone down. That was the first hint that something to with the swamps is causing malaria. But then we found out it was the mosquitoes which lived in the, in the swamps. And then here, um, prions are not cells. That's true, but at the same time, um, actual viruses also are not cells. So that's not one feature. Prions not contain DNA. That's true, but again, some viruses contain only RNA. Prions cannot replicate outside the host cell. That's true, but at the same time, viruses cannot do that either. But prions do not contain any nucleic acid. That's the only feature that t tells them apart from all the different ones. So that's, one, that's why he's correct. All right, so next one is this one. It says the following diagram summarizes the steps of the experimental similar to that carried out by Louis Pasteur, which identified microbes as an agent of decay. Which of the following statements best explains the results obtained? There were no, no microbes in the air around flask P at step 3 or 4. There were no microbes in flask P at the beginning of the experiment. Microbes in flask Q were not all killed by boiling and multiplied following the cooling down of the flask. D. Any microbes present in, the, in both flask P and Q were killed by the boiling process and only flask Q allowed the microbes to re-enter. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. Right, in this case, the actual correct answer is D. The reason why is because the, we, after the actual boiling process, all of them were killed, that's true. And then one of them broke off the actual handle of one of them, which meant only one of them could actually, something could fly inside, whereas in the other ones it got stuck. And then in the one that something could actually get into, that's where we had the microbes growing, and the other one we had nothing growing, so that's why D was correct. Right, another couple. Uh, how is the pathogen for malaria transmitted? A. Anthelese mosquito. B. Direct human contact. C. Particles in air. D. Plasmodium falciparum. Um, next one is, what is the name of the scientist who identified the role of microbes in decay? McFarlane Burnett, Robert Koch, Louis Pasteur, or Ronald Ross. Next one is recent hospitals and medical practitioners have warned the community about the spread of severe acute respiratory syndrome. People who experience high temperatures, body aches, pain, similar to that of flu, how would it classify these descriptions? Control symptoms, warnings, or methods of transmission? 
The next one is the incidence of malaria is currently increasing worldwide. Which of the following strategies is currently the most effective means of reducing the spread of malaria? Quarantining all infected people, reducing mosquito breeding grounds, treating all infected people with high dose of antibiotics, greatly modified human red blood cells to make them malaria resistant. Right. So I'm already pause the video and attempt a question. Welcome back. All right, so the correct answer was 5A. We have, what is the name of the role? That was Louis Pasha. We've got this one in terms of this, which is with symptoms, so that's B. And here we've got removing of breeding grounds, so that's B. So the reason why this one was correct is because it says the transmission, that was the vector, so the one that is actually getting from one place to the next place. Plasmodium is the actual pathogen, not the, not the transmission, and the rest are not correct. And which of the following is the scientist's role in micro microbial decay? That was Louis Pascha, he disproved spontaneous generation. Whereas Robert Koch linked one specific pathogen with one specific type of um, bacteria or a disease. And McFarlane Burnett and Ronald Ross were also wrong. The incidence of malaria is currently increasing worldwide. Which of the following stages is currently the most effective means of reducing the spread of malaria? Reducing mosquito grounds is from all the ones mentioned, is by far the most effective. This is not effective because it's antibiotics and it doesn't help against bacteria. And the rest are just yeah, not super, very, super, very effective. So, and what are all of these? These are all symptoms. Remember, symptoms are signs of the disease. High temperatures, body aches and aches would all be signs of that disease. Right, so next three. Uh, the table lists cause of agents for four diseases. For influenza, Kreuzberg disease, ringworm, food poisoning, and virus, prion, and fungi, and bacteria as the, the agents. Which of these diseases would treatment of antibiotics be most appropriate? A. Influenza, B. Kreuzberg disease, C. Ringworm, or D. Food poisoning. Eight sick animals were found to be suffering from the same symptoms. Blood to show that they were infected with the same type of bacterium. Which of the following strategies would be most best to determine if this particular type of bacterium is the cause of disease? Find other animals with the same symptoms. Attempt to isolate the same type of bacterium from their blood. Inject blood from the animals with the symptoms into suitable hosts. If they develop the same symptoms, this proves that the type of bacterium caused the disease. Use bacteria cultured from the blood of the animals with these symptoms to infect suitable hosts of individuals. If they develop the cause, if they develop the disease, attempt to isolate the same type of bacterium from their blood. Treat all animals with the antibiotics known as known to kill this type of bacterium. They will recover if this type of bacterium is a cause of disease. And then the next one is after the infection was treated with new a new drug, inflammation decreased. In a new patient, inflammation returned after one week. In this patient, in these patients, the pathogens causing the infection were shown to be resistant to, to the drug. What conclusion can be drawn from the observations? A. These patients developed a resistance to the drug. B. The decreased inflammation allowed the pathogens to become resistant to the drug. C. The white blood cells were not functioning properly, and therefore their inflammation returned. Or D. A few pathogens resistant to the drugs were present at the start of the treatment, and the natural selection increased in numbers. Right, so when you ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. Right, so the correct answer in this case was D for this one, it was C for this one, and it was D for this one. Food poisoning is correct because food poisoning is caused by bacteria and antibiotics only to help fight against bacteria and not the rest. In this case we have this one being correct because remember the steps we had to first uh, have an animal that was sick then we get their actual bacteria or whatever we had inside, we culture those, then we put them into a suitable host we see if they develop disease, and if they develop disease, we have to isolate that same bacteria again, and see if we can grow it in a, um, see if we can grow it in culture, right? Or see, let's say those would be the main steps. So even though the other ones are semi-correct, we we're asking for the main one, and these would be the main one. Main C is the, the, the most accurate one. And here we've got the fact that pathogens resistant to drugs were present at the start of the treatment, and natural selection increased in numbers. So because all of the weak ones died off, and the Resistant ones remained, and afterwards the numbers just replicated, and then there was more of them. Uh, so basically, these are the answers, and all of this was your 19 multiple choice questions. So, hopefully, that was useful.